A math problem can be interesting for any number of reasons. Some math problems are just innately very interesting. Some become a little more interesting thanks to some historical context. And today we're looking at just such a problem. This is a portrayal of an Indian mathematician named Mahavira the teacher. And he's well known for his work titled Ganit Sera Samgraha. This work of his is dated to around 850 AD. D, and was actually the first Indian text devoted purely to mathematics. And in this beloved work of Mahivara the teacher appears the problem we are going to solve today. The details of the problem are this. There are two pillars whose heights are known. Let's call their heights P and Q. Two strings are then tied to the tops of the pillars and stretched out and attached to the bases of the opposite pillars. Where the strings meet, another string is suspended and drops vertically until it reaches the ground, and the question is to find the height, which we will call h, of this final string. Also, the pillars rise vertically from the ground, so we can assume that these are two right angles, and since this string drops vertically to the ground, we can assume that is a right angle as well. And so again, the final goal is to find the length of this string, we're calling that length h, and the only things we know are the heights of these two pillars, so our answer should be in terms of P and Q. Now's the perfect time to stop the video and try it yourself. Let's get into the solution. There are some important triangles in this picture, and to help describe the solution, it will be useful to label the vertices. So we will call this point A, we will call this point B, and this point over here, C. This gives us the points of one large triangle, A, B, C. We'll also call this point over here, D, which gives us this triangle, A, C, D. And if we find it useful to refer to these points, we'll give them names as well. That point of intersection of those two strings is E, and where this string reaches the ground, we'll call that point F. All right, immediately we have two pairs of similar triangles. Triangle ABC must be similar to triangle FEC. We know triangle ABC is similar to triangle FEC because FE is a segment that joins this side of ABC to this side of ABC, and it's parallel to that third side, AB. So anytime that happens, a similar triangle is cut out of that bigger triangle. The similarity is also easy to justify just by looking at the angles. This angle and this angle have to be the same because they're core corresponding angles, we've got parallel lines cut by a transversal. Same thing over here, we have corresponding angles. So those two angles are congruent. Of course, the third angle, which is common to both triangles, is the same. And so indeed, these are similar triangles. By the same reasoning, we have another pair of similar triangles. Indeed, triangle ACD must be similar to triangle AFE. With these similarities established, we can start to write some equations based on the proportionality of corresponding sides between similar triangles. Now to do that, it will be useful to first label a couple more lengths here with single letters so that we don't have to write segment names like AB and AF over and over again. Let's call this distance here from A to F x, and we'll call this distance from f to c y. So the length of a c total is x plus y. All right, then from the similarity of this triangle and this one, we know that the ratio of a b to a c must be the same as the ratio of f e to f c. The length of a b we have called p. So we have that the ratio of a b, which is p, to a c, which is x plus y, must equal the ratio of the corresponding sides in this similar triangle, that's f e to f c, and that ratio is h to y. And we can create a similar equation with our other pair of similar triangles. Indeed, the ratio of CD to CA must be the same as the ratio of FE to FA. That is, Q to X plus Y must equal H to X. 
length. Once more, remember our end goal is to figure out the length of this string, or the height of the intersection of those other two strings, and to express that in terms of the known quantities, the only two of which are p and q. We've labeled x and y here for convenience, but we do not know their lengths. So the final answer has to be in terms of p and q. All right, so we've got some algebra to do. We're going to begin by what I think the kids call cross multiplying in both of these equations. So I'm multiplying both sides by y and by x plus y in this equation. That's going to give us py equals h times x plus y. And we'll do a similar thing with the other equation, multiplying both sides by x plus y and multiplying both sides by x. We're just getting rid of these denominators. So that's going to give us qx equals h times x plus y. Now to get this first equation involved in this second one, we're going to rewrite x as x plus y minus y, so that this is now q times x plus y minus y. Of course, y and y cancel out, so it's still really just x. And on the right, we have h times x plus y. Now, if we distribute the q on the left, we have q times x plus y minus q times y. And on the right, we have h times x plus y. Now, it's almost true that everything here has a factor of x plus y, and we could divide them all out. Except, of course, this term has a factor of y, no, x plus y. However, if we look back at the first equation, if we divided both sides of this equation by p, we would have that y equals h times x plus y over p. So we're going to replace this y with h times x plus y over p using this first equation. So now minus q times y becomes minus q times h times x plus y over p. And again, this equals on the right side, which I really have to squish in here, h times x plus y. Now everything has a factor of x plus y, so we're going to divide everything by x plus y. But also, we would like to get rid of this p in the denominator, so we're going to multiply everything by p as well. So multiply everything by p, divide everything by x plus y, that's going to give us p times q minus q times h, that's this second term after the multiplication and division. And on the right, we will have h times p. Now remember, we're trying to get h by itself to figure out the height of this string. So let's add qh to both sides of this equation, and then we can factor an h out of those two h terms. So we would have hp plus qh equals p times q. Then we simply factor an h out of these two terms to have h times p plus q equals pq, and finally divide both sides by p plus q to arrive at our answer h equals pq divided by p plus q. So in this situation where the heights of the pillars are p and q, the height of that point of intersection of the strings that are tied to them is going to be p times q divided by p plus q. Now there's actually a bit more interesting stuff going on with this if you're willing to work with the expression a little bit. Let's divide the numerator and denominator both by p and q. So the numerator we divide by pq, which turns it into 1. And the denominator we divide by pq. When you divide p by pq, you get 1 over q. When you divide q by pq, you get 1 over p. So it appears the height we were looking for, expressed differently, is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of the heights of those original pillars. And this is kind of interesting because this number is actually half of what's called the harmonic mean of the two heights. The typical mean you learn about in stats class is the arithmetic mean. You also may have heard about the geometric mean, but this is the less common harmonic mean. The the harmonic mean of a set of numbers is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of those numbers 
multiplied by the number of numbers. So the harmonic mean here would be multiplied by two. Of course, we don't have a two, we just have one, which is why this is half the harmonic mean. As a quick example, if we were looking at the numbers three, five, and seven, the harmonic mean would be the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of those numbers. So one third plus one fifth, plus one seventh, all in the denominator, and this needs to get multiplied by the number of numbers, in this case, three. So that's just an example of the harmonic mean. But yeah, in this situation, when we have these two pillars, the height of the point of intersection of these two strings is half the harmonic mean of the heights of the pillars. Pretty cool stuff. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsold the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so